Hello, 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 everyone. This is Reagan Thompson. I hope you're doing so well today. Thank you so much for joining me today on this podcast. It's always a pleasure and an honor to serve in this way on these podcasts. So thank you for joining me today. I am welcoming Christina Maria, and she is very important in my life. She's a dear friend. She's a profound healer on the planet. She's truly a gift to humanity in so many ways with all of her gifts that she has brought to this planet. And I'm so grateful to have her here today. And today we are going to be talking about the topic of awakening to our true divine essence. This is a very important and uh, very beneficial topic. I hope that you find it to be so as well as it has been so extremely important in my life to truly begin to lead in my true divine essence. So thank you so much. But first I have some questions for our listeners. So here we go. What is your true divine essence? Did you know when we tap into our true essence, everything in life flows better? What are some of the attributes of the divine feminine and the divine masculine? What are some of the benefits to leading in your true divine essence? Christina Maria has gained international recognition as a gifted healer, spiritual teacher, and channel for Mother Mary. As a young child, she was able to see and communicate with angels. And at the age of seven, she heard the calling to serve the Divine Mother, who began preparing her for her great mission to help awaken the hearts of humanity and to anchor the divine feminine onto the planet. During the group and individual channelings, Christina Maria embodies Mother Mary as she brings through her unconditional love, wisdom, and beautiful messages. Transmissions of Mother Mary's profound healing energy are also given as she sings beautiful sounds which open the heart and harmonize the chakras and energy field. Many have received deep emotional and physical healing through these transmissions. Christina Maria leads retreats internationally and has appeared on television and international radio. She has a master's degree in counseling psychology and attended the Barbara Brennan School of Healing, a four-year program in energy medicine. She is also a practitioner of the metamorphosis technique, a Reiki master and a rebirther, She lived and taught at Kripalu Yoga Center and also taught at the School for Enlightenment and Healing. Christina Maria has worked with individuals and groups for 30 years in private practices in diverse settings such as hospice, crisis centers, and a pain and stress relief clinic. She also leads seminars in personal and spiritual growth, energy medicine, and angelic healings. So I'm so happy to be here today with Christina. Oh, this is so good. I love Christina. She and I have been in each other's lives now for the last few years. She just mentioned to me it's been six years. So welcome, Christina. I'm so happy you're here with me today. Thank you so much, Reagan. It's wonderful to be here. (laughs) And I love you so much, too. (laughs) It really is such an honor to have you here. I've done some beautiful work with Christina over the years. Um, talk about someone who has really begun to fully lead in her divine feminine essence. Wow. I mean, I always think of Christina as the walking embodiment of the divine mother herself. She really has this radiant light that comes through her eyes and this beautiful feminine flowing presence that always has been such an inspiration for me. So it really is such an honor to have you here with us talking about this topic, about awakening to our true divine essence. You know, I'm sure this has been a journey for you, and it has certainly been a journey for me, and we all have our specific story or journey of how we maybe are coming more into learning about our essence, our true divine essence, as well as maybe even um, not only knowing it better, but starting to embody it more in our life. And I know for me, this story of getting to where I'm at with even beginning to leave in my feminine has been just a profound, intense journey. You know, I did not come into this life within a, fem- within a feminine environment. And me being so extremely feminine, what a strange, unusual environment I was inside of to challenge me to find out, you know, who I am through that environment. And I think this is really common. I'm sure a lot of our listeners today, Christina, can really relate to this, that they too might have been born into an environment where it wasn't supporting their essence. 
It wasn't to actually help them step into their true divine essence. It was actually maybe even um, incongruent to that. And in fact, challenging them to know who they are. So whether that be because of two masculine parents with a a very feminine young child coming into being, or um, maybe one parent only being there as the lead parent, which might be only the man, could be just a father with with a young little girl. Um, there's different reasons, as well as um, maybe a controlling authoritarian type of environment with two, again, um, maybe one masculine father in that way that's more controlling masculine, and or maybe a mom that is somewhat feminine but being controlled by the masculine within the environment. So therefore, the feminine is looking very weak and you know very controlled. So the the actual perception of the feminine could be. Um, out of balance, right? There's all these different ways that we're born into um, the world. And for me, I know I was born into the world in a very controlling masculine environment, two authoritarian parents that really kind of said to me, here's the way the world works. Sit down, Reagan, sit in that chair, and we're going to tell you how it works. And there was no softness. There was no connection emotionally to my my spirit or to my soul to get to know me emotionally. And I think this is really common. So this is just a little tidbit of my story. I'd like to hear a little bit more from you, kind of how you began and how you started to really know yourself through your essence, your divine essence. Well, I was always a very feminine girl, although my as a child, I was very athletic. But I was always very feminine. I was always very aware that I was a girl (laughs) and loved being a girl. So, you know, many people, uh, as you're saying, um, have to work more at being in the divine feminine. For me, my work has been more incorporating the masculine. And I had a very, actually very spiritual upbringing as a child. I was raised Catholic. And... um, My mother was very devoted to the Divine Mother, which, of course, is the epitome of the Divine Feminine Energy. And so I kind of grew up in that way. And um, and I knew as a little girl, people ask me all the time, how did you get started channeling Mother Mary? And uh, and this completely leads into our Divine Feminine Essence. When I was a little girl, I had a very strong devotion to her at a very young age. And I knew that I wanted to help her. And I told her I wanted to help her to bring love and peace into the world. And little did I know what was going to happen in my life. So I would take my mother's statue of Mary, and I would sit there with the faith of a child. And I would wait for Mary's statue to transform and appear to me and speak to me like she did to the children at Lourdes and Fatima and and, uh, Medjugorje. And that never happened. But, you know, our prayers are always answered. And years ago, I was leading a retreat in Assisi, Italy. And after the retreat, I went into a little church, and I was there by myself. It was the most beautiful statue of Mary. And I was mesmerized by the beauty of this statue, and I went into a trance. And during that trance, Mary appeared to me, and the whole room turned into a mist of golden white light. Mm -hmm. It was so beautiful. And she spoke to me, and she was transmitting healing energy to me and thanking me for listening, for listening to my divine purpose and to listening to her call to help anchor the divine feminine onto the planet. And after the... um, After I finally came out of the trance, I took photos of the statue, and what came out in the photos were her apparitions. And starting in the fall, I will be writing a book and putting those photos in the book. But I want to say that um, everyone has a divine essence. Everyone has a divine essence. We're all divine. Every baby is born divine. It It is a given because... We are one with God, and God has instilled within us this beautiful, magnificent essence of love and light and beauty, and it is a gift that we've all been given. So there are not just a select few people who have this. We all have this. And the greatest gift that we can give to ourselves is to honor this in ourselves, to really acknowledge this. And the greatest gift that we can give to another is to see that also in the other person and to mirror that to them so that they can see it in themselves as well. And especially with young children, as you know, Reagan, with your children, I see you do that all the time. 
So, yes, we all have this beautiful spark of divine essence within us. Mm-hmm. And that is, that is really our path for all of us. I mean, we're all unique. We all come with unique gifts and a, a unique mission. But really for all of us, what we have in common is to live in this divine essence. That's our work. Mm-hmm. And to bring that forth. And that being said, um, the divine essence, how would you describe that in your own words, mm-hmm. what the divine essence truly is? Okay. So it's the heart essence. It's the energy of love, beauty, uh, that, that beautiful God light within us. And the best way to tap into your divine essence is through the heart, to go in that sacred, beautiful chamber of your heart and know that your own divine beloved is always waiting there for you with open arms. And that is the best way to connect with your divine essence and then communicate with that beloved within your heart. And that is when you really tap into the divine essence. It's not outside of you. Although we need people as well to help us on our path. But it's just this beautiful, it's your beauty, it's your magnificence, it's your gifts, it's your uniqueness. It's the wonder of who you are. Mm -hmm. That is your divine essence. Mm -hmm. Yes. And would you say that it it sounds, um, gosh, I'm, I'm... hearing you so greatly in in respect to the heart and and, and finding that within your heart. And it is the best work and the most effective work I know to work with any type of healing within our body and discovery of ourself is through the heart. I 100% agree. And through that work of moving into the heart and getting to know yourself and really feeling into the heart and dropping into the heart and living from the heart and leading in the heart, you discover these interesting facets and colors and attributes of yourself in that place. You know, this is really where your soul resides within the heart, right? And your soul came here to learn very specific lessons, um, very specific um, ways of being in the world so that it can learn its lessons, right? And so that being said, we've got women and men on the planet right now that I know, um, I know for sure a few right now that I'm thinking of that I care deeply about that are really struggling to know who they are through this experience of discovering their divine essence, right? Because in some way, like I was describing, they were born maybe into an environment or a situation or have trauma from this life or another where it is a struggle for them to rest in their spirit long enough to even drop into the heart for a moment, right? This is very common. And sometimes I, I work with clients all the time around dropping into their heart, helping them reside there and lead from there th- through the session, through the healing session. And wow, what a profound difference versus, you know, psychologically processing through the mind and, you know, having this profound effective session versus that other kind of psychological processing experience. And that when you first share that with someone about this practice of embracing and dropping into the heart and, you know, they kind of look at you like, could it be that simple? Right? Like, really? And I'm like, no, this is, this is really it. And then, you know, getting through that first level of resistance where someone says, oh my gosh, like, you mean it really is that easy that I could just take a moment, take a breath, drop into my heart and start to learn about myself, my true self, the truth, the truth of who I am. And in that truth, I do think that's where we find this idea of the femininity or the masculinity that exists within us. You know, I'm not saying that we're one or the other, but I do believe that there's a harmonization that does start to happen within those two energies. It is two different facets in some way of ourself, these different, you know, the feminine being very cooperative and loving and compassion and flowing and graceful and kind and and open and receptive and intuitive, right? All these attributes. And then the masculine can be very the doing energy, like you're saying more, you're more the the beer. And, and the doer is more masculine. So the, the feminine is very being oriented and the masculine is more doing oriented. And um, I always see the feminine so needed to bring in first the the creativity and the inspiration. And then the masculine's like, okay, I'm coming in now. I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> I'm bringing it now into fruition. And so you need both energies. I do see though many women on the planet right now. And, you know, fortunate for you, it sounds like you were born very feminine, knew you were feminine, stayed feminine, and resided in this very feminine place throughout this life, which is, I want to get into this a moment with you. Um, I'm sure there's been a lot of benefit to that. And for those who haven't, that have struggled to 
maybe I came into this life very feminine, just as you, dressing up in little outfits and dresses and my clappy shoes. My mom said I couldn't take off my clappy shoes. I was always wearing them, these little black shoes that like had you know, a little tap, tap, <laughs> tappiness when you tapped them on the floor and my little purse filled with all kinds of makeup and You know, and then I was in a family that was doers, just go-getters. Like, you know, I knew that in that environment, if I didn't get my myself together and start acting like that, I was going to get a lot of attention and I probably wasn't going to get a lot of love because they were very busy. So I need to find a way to weed myself into that family so that I could be seen and heard and noticed. And so I think this is really common on the planet. So I took on more of the masculine for some time. And the greatest work that I know that I've done in this life, which this is why I'm very excited to do this topic with you today is was to do the work of bringing that back into balance. You know, there's, I've done all kinds of healing modalities, workshops, seminars, classes, healers, teachers throughout my life. But the, the most important work that I've ever done was to start to bring my feminine into the forefront and to start to really lead within what I would say my true divine goddess self, right? My God, my God, goddess self, right? Our God-like self, the God essence, as you're saying inside yourself and who you really are. (laughs) So then finding through that, wow, this gentleness, this lightness, this full on ability to be productive and efficient in life, but at the same point, feeling that ease in my spirit. And I think that's where there's a misperception on the planet right now with a lot of women and men, that if we are to lead in our divine essence, that could be a place of weakness or you won't get enough done or there's going to be a judgment upon that as, you know, um, too controlling, too uh, intense. Because sometimes men, in fact, they judge the masculine as well because, I mean, due to the fact that their father was, you know, intense or very controlling or was always working and wasn't there for him. You know, there's all kinds of wounding, as you know, around this. And um, so I'm just finding it um, important to really share with our listeners that if they feel that they're also struggling in some way with bringing that into balance, that's very common and it can become, it can come into balance. So how has it been beneficial for you, Christina, to really have the fortunate life really of leading in your essence, your divine essence, your beautiful feminine essence for this life? How do you feel like that's been beneficial for you? Well, you know, like you, Reagan, I have uh, lots of education, lots of training. I work with lots of teachers. I've done a lot of my own therapy. You know, as a teenager, I experimented with drugs. You know, I just had pretty, uh, you know, pretty broad experiences. And even after my childhood, I did not, I was not connecting with Mother Mary ongoingly. Um, I I just always loved being a woman. Um, And for me, my growing edge was incorporating more of the male energy, you know, to balance myself. And I'm still working on that. That's my growing edge. Um, But I do, I want to get, I want to talk about something that I think is really powerful. And uh, again, I'm going back to Mother Mary because she has been my greatest teacher. And, uh, you know, the transformation uh, that I have seen through the people who have worked with me in the group sessions and the private sessions has been just profound, profound healing and transformation. A number of years ago, on the cover of National Geographic was a picture of Mary, and the caption read, Mary, the most powerful woman in the world. And so what is that power? That's the kind of power that a lot of people run away from. But that power is that profound love, that profound, unconditional love. And I'm not saying that, you know, working with Mother Mary is the only way to get there, but that's been my journey. The patriarchal way of doing things on our planet has not worked. And by that, I don't, I'm not talking about the masculine. I'm talking about that uh, collective consciousness of the patriarchal way of doing things, because that is about, uh, be, you know, the, the misconception that that, that that is power, that that's the way to be powerful, to have power over, to have um, separation, um, to uh, abuse. And that has not worked. It has only caused a lot of pain and, and dis- disruption on our planet. And so we need a different way. 
And the only way is through the heart. That's why I keep going back to that. Um, and, you know, a lot of people are afraid of um, really opening their hearts because they are afraid it will be painful. And that's very understandable. And in my own life, too, I have not had, my life has not been peaches and cream all the time. I had a very rough relationship with my father, did a lot of therapy. I mean, I'm, I'm somebody who's really, really, really worked a lot in my life with my personal growth. Um but what I know is that, that that power of that love is the greatest force in the universe. And when we are living from our hearts, we're not in resistance. And then the universe can come in and guide us more uh, effectively, more efficiently, because we always have amazing, extraordinary helpers and guidance that is there for us. The pain that we try to avoid by closing the heart down is not as painful as having a closed heart. Because when we close our hearts down, we're very disconnected. And then really nothing in life flows. It's very hard to manifest it's very hard to have a happy life. That's basically it. And so, and I know for many people, it is not easy to open the heart because they have had a lot of pain. And, and, um, and they, and the other thing about having an open heart is a lot of people feel that they will not be protected, that it will not be safe. But the opposite is true for the reason I stated how when our heart is open, we're out of resistance. And we can much more easily flow with life. The other thing is that it is our greatest protection because isn't it a gift to be around someone who has an open heart? You feel like you can put down your defenses. You feel safe. You feel that you can be yourself. And that is such a gift when the heart is open. And that gift allows other people to feel safe enough to open their hearts. And that's why those of us, you know, who are on this spiritual path, and everyone is on a spiritual path, everyone is on a path of awakening and enlightenment. We're all just doing it at a different pace. And we all have our own issues and things that we have to work with in life. But what I have found is that when I'm in my heart, which is the divine feminine essence, my life flows so much better. I feel more loving. I feel more receptive. I can uh, give and receive more easily. Um, People love being around me. And um, I want to share a story also um, about a woman. Her name, she called herself the Peace Pilgrim. And I don't remember if she wrote a book But she, as an older woman, she dedicated her life to her mission was to bring peace onto the planet. And she gave up all her possessions and she did a lot of hitchhiking. And one time when she was hitchhiking, she uh, was picked up by this man. And after she got into his car, she just knew he was going to molest her. And she stayed in her heart and she said, And I'm paraphrasing, but she said to him something like, thank you so much for helping me. I was really hoping that a really good person would pick me up and help me. And then she told him about her mission. And and she kept telling him how wonderful he was and how grateful she was to him. Well, what she did was she appealed to his higher self, which was his divine essence. No one had ever spoken to him like that before. So, of course, he helped her. And he not only gave her a ride where she needed to go, but he joined her in her mission. And so that's just an example of how we can really help other people just by having an open heart. Thank you. Yeah, I was hearing a lot of wonderful things you were sharing in reference to, first off, the beautiful support that everyone has in reference to their 
divine teachers that are the invisible ones, right? Mother Mary being yours primary teacher and I having Mother Mary in my life greatly and working with Jesus so um, much these days. It's just been so incredible. That support is so incredible. It's so real and so available for all of us. So I just want to reiterate that, that point that you said for sure. So profound and it's just accessible to everyone all the time these beautiful teachers, these invisible teachers, and also hearing how you're, you're sharing how, um, when we're in our true divine essence, how flow is, is so much more available in life and the the ability to manifest and the ability to, um, enjoy your life and feel more heart centered and have people more attracted to you because of that, right. Having true, maybe genuine relationships that are, um, authentic and, and real, Right. And so there's so many benefits. And I think the detriment then would be that all of that doesn't exist as much. And, and we don't want to live like that. Right. This is, if we have a choice, and that's what I'm hearing is that every person, myself, yourself, everyone included on who's listening, we all have a choice how to change this if we want to. And one of the great ways, of course, is to start to lead and live from the heart, as well as start to tap into that divine support that's available all the time. It really is. And I think that is really um, one of the bigger issues on the planet. People feel very alone. They feel like they don't have support and they feel that um, maybe they don't have money to get the teacher or the program or whatever, right? Something that they need to purchase. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't get a good teacher for sure, as well as in the physical right now. Absolutely. Or find a program that's wonderful for you that you resonate with. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this other support that's available that is divine and real and available all the time, you don't have to pay for it, (laughs) right? Amazing. And that's just to really share that with, you know, the community that's listening right now, our audience. And then as well to just thank you for sharing that story. It's interesting. I, I have such a similar story. I actually picked up a hitchhiker when I was in my early 20s. And that's almost like like identical story. I literally had never picked up a hitchhiker in my entire life. I was 21 years old. I was living in Boulder, Colorado. I had had a really fun night and enjoyed my morning. I was up late and I decided to pick up a hitchhiker because I was feeling really happy and vibrant and blissful. And I was just feeling just, God, just there could be nothing in my life that wasn't amazing in that moment. I just really had tapped into that, even though I was having a tough time at the time. But I just in that moment, I really felt this deep connection with myself. And I picked up a hitchhiker, same thing. I He got in the car. I, as soon as I picked him up, I, I knew for sure that he was wanting to hurt me. And, and But it was only after I said, get in the car, right? There was that moment. And I was like, oh, he's getting in the car. And I did the exact same thing. It's so interesting. I just flooded him with... I was so grateful for my life. I was so grateful to meet him. I was so happy to see such a bright, shiny face, even though he wasn't really very bright or shiny. And the interesting part of that story, the same thing at the very end of the, the, I was, I knew I was fortunate that I I was not hurt because he was definitely having a really hard time in his life. And I I don't think he got in the car for anything other to hurt someone. At the end of the ride, he said to me, you're very lucky today that you did not get hurt by someone that was very angry today. And because of your love and because of your light that you brought, and maybe not exactly the word light, I think you have been saved basically. And I said, okay. So you never know, I guess, is really when, (laughs) when that ability to be in your heart and drop in your heart and stay in your heart, how it could be even protective in your life. You know, it's not just, that's what creates true safety and security, right? It's inside of ourself. And you never know when it could be your saving grace. I mean, that's just takes it to a higher level here. We, you know, here we are taking it to a higher level. So just the, the profound benefit of leading in your divine essence and figuring out, you know, um, the ways to do that. And one of the greatest ways is through the heart. And I really appreciate you sharing that because that's the number one way that I know. And, and then as well, tapping into that support with our teachers, you know, if they be in the invisible realm or the physical realm, Right. So thank you so much for that. Yeah. And, and I'm glad, yeah. glad you brought that up about physical teachers as well, because we all need, we all need each other. Mm-hmm. And we all need, there are times, I know there have been times in my life, even though I have a very, very, very strong spiritual connection with the divine, there have been times in my life where I need a person to, you know, be there for me. Mm-hmm. And I also want to say that um, 
we need to be authentic. Not everybody is going to be flowing in the divine feminine like I am. You know, we, we need to be authentic and listen to what's, what is our truth. And, and we also need to listen to our shadow side. You know, the, the part of us that has fear, the part of us that can be angry, can be jealous, can be whatever, that we don't just push that aside and say, well, I'm just going to be in my heart, you know, because that doesn't work either. We have to be really genuine with what is going on within us and, um, you know, and really allow that fear, those emotions, that shadow self to have a voice because there is so much power there as well. And when we listen to that and we, and we um, uh, really take heed of the messages and how that can also serve us in our lives, then we come even more into balance, you see, and then we, um, we transform that. Fear is not bad. Anger is not bad. Th- those things, that's part of being human. And we really need to uh, incorporate the wisdom of those energies and what they have to teach us. Mm-hmm. And everyone has, has to find their own way of, of doing that. And it, and it certainly helps to have a teacher. I know I'm also a psychotherapist, mm-hmm. and I do a lot of work with people with their shadow. I think it's so important because there are many people on the spiritual path who do not want to go there. You know, they just want to stay up in those higher energies, in the light, you know. Mm-hmm. And they are doing themselves a great disservice because there's so much power. And even when I do the private sessions with Mother Mary, we go into the shadow. People bring difficult situations, painful situations that she helps them with, you know. But in the end, it's always the heart energy that, uh, that heals. Yeah, thank you so much, Christina. Yes, the shadow just I, as I've learned my shadow and every shadow on the planet really just wants to come into the light. He just wants to be brought into the light. You know, it's this part, these parts of ourselves supposedly that are wrong or bad or not enough or not worthy or really we've oh, no, I'm not that. And you know, I'm good. I am light. I am love. It's like, wait, there's parts of me as well that are still struggling here and that need to you need some love and attention. And so yes, the shadow work is so powerful and important. And what I also know is that a lot of what our shadow has going on is a lot of these misperceptions that we're talking about earlier. A lot of the uh, irrational beliefs and confusion, right? So by doing that work that you're describing, bringing the shadow into the light and healing the shadow and helping the shadow heal, we clear up those misperception, misperceptions and irrationality and bring the truth into the light. And so it's just such really important work, I know, to truly begin to not only drop into the heart, but live there. Because I believe it is some of the shadow, right? That's like, I don't, I, I don't want to be there, right? It's just, it just doesn't feel comfortable. I don't feel safe. I don't trust you yet. Um, so kind of dropping in and out of the heart is kind of the first part of the journey, you know? And then the consistency of staying in the heart through the healing of the shadow is, um, is so important. And it is the way. And that being said, I'm so happy that you came here today. This has been a profound, love, lovely conversation. And I hope that this has been extremely helpful and beneficial for those who are listening today. And it's always such a gift to be with Christina. Christina and I have, like I said, I have a past of six years and I have done some wonderful sessions with her, channelings with Mother, Mother Mary. And I will continue to. I was just thinking about calling you and scheduling once again. <laughs> and truly, the work that she does is profound and beautiful and deep and meaningful and such a gift. She's such a gift on this planet. So it has been a great honor to have her here with us today. Thank you so much, Reagan. And of course, an honor for me as well. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share about my work and the gifts that I have to share with others to help them on their journey. We're human, right? We're human. We're, we're spiritual beings in a human body, but we are on this earth. And we do have a lot of challenges here. You know, it's this earth is not always an easy place. And so uh, it is easy to feel alone. And really, one of our greatest challenges here is the illusion of separation. This, and this is one of the biggest problems on the planet. It's political. It's, you know, countries feel separate from each other. And 
And how often do we even feel separate from ourselves? You know, and that's a very, that's a very difficult place to be. And so, um, again, we have to honor all of who we are all the time. The shadow, the beauty, the gifts, the things we don't like. It's part of our wholeness. And we can't really bypass anything. We can't really push anything under the rug because that does not work. So, and also, I think it's so important to do, um, you know, to connect with the inner child because that's a lot of where our earliest wounding has come from that affects a lot of our beliefs and patterns and attitudes in life and, and the, uh, the ways that we maybe hold ourselves back. So I think it's so important to, uh, to do all of that. And, um, the, and the only way, again, I feel is that the heart is the beloved, your beloved self is always there waiting for you with open arms. And to ask yourself every day, what do I need? What is it that my heart is calling me to do? What is it that my heart is longing for? And then you talk to your heart and allow your heart to answer. It will always answer. Yes, it will always answer. And uh, yeah, so I thank you so much for listening. And I hope that maybe in, there are maybe ways that I can help you with your process, with your journey. Well, thank you so much, Christina. What a beautiful um way to describe the process and the journey of becoming more in tune with your true self and leading your divine essence and through the inner child work and the shadow work it's really powerful work so thank you so much and i i want to give you an opportunity right now because i'm sure you've got all kinds of wonderful things happening and to be helpful to humanity (laughs) and so if you have any offerings you want to share about right now i'd like to give you an opportunity to share well thank you and i guess i'll start by giving my website so I have a, a website that is a divine feminine website. <laughs> it's very beautiful. And many people have told me that they have felt healed just going to the website. So my website is my name, and it's www.christina, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-A, Maria, M-A-R-I-A, Kramer, K-R-A-M-E-R dot com. Christina Maria Kramer dot com. And I'll give my email address also. It's Christina Maria and the number six at yahoo dot com. So if you go to my website, you can read about all the different things that I do. And I have many, many, many very beautiful inspirational uh, testimonials from people all over the world. So there's the individual channeling events with Mother Mary. And then I do several modalities. I've been an energy healer for 30 years. I have studied with Barbara Brennan, who is a very famous healer. She wrote a book called Hands of Light. And she has a four-year school of healing that I graduated from about 25 years ago. And people come from all over the world to study with her, including doctors and nurses. And she was one of the four leaders in teaching about the energy field and the chakra system. And so we study in depth about that. And then there are many very advanced, profound healing techniques that, that we learn in the school. And so I work with the energy field, the chakra system, all parts of the body. And it is a very comprehensive body, mind, spirit a uh, beautiful healing session. And I do uh, bring in very often Mother Mary. I bring in Ascended Masters. I help people c- uh, to connect with deceased loved ones, whatever your higher self is calling forth. I'm also a Reiki master. And then I am also a rebirther, which is very, very powerful breath work, profound work. And then there is the metamorphic technique, which I won't go into now, but you can read about all of that on my website. I also have been a psychotherapist for 30 years. 
I have studied with all the top people in my field, both traditional and more of the New Age spiritual ways of working, and that work is amazing. And so there are testimonials for all these things that I do. If you go to my website and click on uh, contact, you can leave me a message. Let me know that you came to this podcast and you will receive a 30% discount on a session. That is my gift to you. Also, uh, if you uh, leave your email address or you're welcome to leave your phone number, um, I like using the phone, which a lot of people don't anymore. <laughs> um, you can get onto my website. I do many, many um, events. I do uh, channeling events with Mother Mary, and there's always a different topic, and that is where I first met Reagan six years ago. And um, then I also do a eight-week course on the energy field and the chakra system, which is based on my four years of training with Barbara Brennan. And uh, in that, you get a very, very uh, in-depth understanding of who you are as an energy being. And you get to work with your own chakras, your own energy field. And there are many self-healing techniques that I teach that you can use every day in your life. And it's wonderful. I also have a seminar on angels where I help people connect directly with their angels. And there are many beautiful meditative techniques. And then I also have uh, workshops where I teach people to connect with spirit guides. And I do also lead events on um, personal and spiritual growth. So please go to my website and you will see these a lot of these things that I'm doing. And please contact me, send me a message, and you will get a 30% discount on a session. And also there are some beautiful channel prayers on my website that you can download for free. You'll get both uh, an audio and a PDF. Thank you so much. I look forward to hearing from you, and I really hope that this podcast has helped at least a little bit to open your heart and help you connect with your own beautiful divine essence. And I would love to be available to serve you. Thank you so much. Today's episode is brought to you by the Consciousness Network. The Consciousness Network's mission is to establish, promote, and advance conscious communities. It contributes to local and global well-being through its ongoing programs, which serve as meeting spaces, training grounds, resource pools, and a support network to help the Santa Barbara and Southern California community fulfill its potential and impact the world. The Consciousness Network strengthens the bonds between all of us, creating relationships through which true healing, service, and transformation can take place. For more information and to sign up, the Consciousness Network may be contacted at www.consciousnessnetwork.org. So if you enjoyed being with us on this podcast today, I would really love it if you join me on my website. It's reagantompson.com. And on my website, you'll find any upcoming events. If you prefer to get into an event, there's even a place that you can buy your tickets for the event, as well as testimonials you can check out there, as well as audios and podcasts. This is all free on my website. I have been hearing repeatedly from people, not only within locally uh, and around the world, that they're getting a lot of benefit out of hearing the audios, which are offering wonderful healing techniques for you to bring into your life. So I hope that you also join me and partake in these free offerings. You can follow me on social media at Reagan underscore Thompson. That would be so wonderful. So I'm so very grateful. Thank you so much for joining me today on this podcast. It has been once again, um, just a beautiful honor to serve you in this way. And I hope that you have found some benefit to what was shared today and you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much and many blessings. I'll talk to you soon.